QD Technology have been designing and developing 3D printers for many years. They do make a good range of 3D printers well worth taking a look at. I will leave a link in the description below to their website for these 3D printers. The printer that took my interest was the XCF Pro. Although it can be used in commercial circumstances, it is ideal for home use. It has a very good range of material that it supports, which can be carbon fiber, PLA, ABS, TPU, PETG, nylon and PC. You are provided with two extruders, one for high temperature and one ordinary extruder. The print size is 300 by 250 by 300 millimeters. The print accuracy is very good at 0.05 to 0.2 millimeters. The print speed is 60 millimeters a second. The nozzle diameter is 0.4 millimeters. The carbon fiber extruder is less than or equal to 350 degrees centigrade. It has a good range of connection options which can be Wi-Fi, LAN or using the USB pen drive. The supported platforms can be Windows 64-bit or Mac. Compatible software is QD Print, Cura or Simplified 3D. The input voltage is 110 to 220 volts AC, either 50 or 60 Hz at 450 watts. There is a simple unpacking procedure suggested in both the manual and a small video on the supplied USB pen drive. I would suggest you read the manual or look at the small videos on the pen drive to get information on unpacking and using your new 3D printer. I would suggest strongly when unpacking your printer to have another person with you as the printer is very heavy weighing in at 32.5 kilogram. The machine size itself is 610 by 515 by 678 millimeters. Not only does the packaging protect the printer during transportation but also houses many of the accessories that comes with your printer. As with any new item that you get, check thoroughly that none of the items or printer is damaged in any way when you receive it. Everything that you need to operate and use the printer is provided in the packing list. Everything you see on the packing list here should be with your printer, so check thoroughly all the packaging if you have a part missing. Although the printer is already built when you receive it, there are items that you can add on if you wish to do so. Desiccant is also provided for use with the dry box. When you first unpack your printer, the extruder that's fitted to it is the high temperature extruder. This would be for the usual carbon fibre and nylon prints. A normal extruder is also provided. For maintenance purposes or extruder changes, a scraper, screwdrivers and spanners are provided. QD Technology printers have always been of good quality. This printer has the newly upgraded X, Y and Z structure, which incorporates industrial grade manufacturing of the dual z-axis and industrial guide now this can achieve high precision and fast printing stainless steel threaded bar has been used throughout this printer all the steady bearings are of very high quality as you can see here thick steel has been used for each of the brackets the micro switches are well located out of the way and all cables are well shielded as you can see here, the build and quality of material is superb. It was good to see the tried and tested bed levelling method that they use is still used today, even though they've now incorporated automatic bed levelling. When you first unpack your printer, the high temperature extruder with a BL touch for auto levelling is fitted. One thing to note that the BL touch is only fitted to the high temperature extruder and it is not fitted to the normal extruder. The good news is that you can move over the BL touch for auto leveling to the normal extruder. The spring steel printing plate is coated in PEI material. 
It is held in place by a total of 25 strong magnets so there is no fear of it moving when printing. When the plate is warm the models stick on and when cool come off easily. This printer does have a large printing area coming in at 300 by 250 by 300 millimeters print size. On the top right hand side can be found the USB pen drive socket. It is suggested that when printing carbon fiber that you leave the acrylic cover on and when printing PLA or TPU that you remove the cover. If not required the filament holder folds away neatly and can be extracted and held in place when in use or little levers to reduce the filament holder arms. The provided filament sensor can be fitted here. We will fit this later. Next to the plug is an 8 amp fuse carrier. An RJ45 lead can be fitted here to connect onto your PC for doing land prints. The fan on the rear of the printer is controlled by its software. They do provide you with a printed manual. This is extremely good, easy to follow in picture format and it takes you from unpacking your printer up until the first usage of your printer. One thing that was very pleasing to see that not only do you get the printed manual but you will get a memory stick, a USB memory stick that you can use on your PC. It is a 16 gigabyte stick in total and on there it has absolutely everything even small videos on how to do things which I found extremely useful. A couple of test prints are also provided on this stick. The large 5 inch HD capacitive display is very responsive and measures in millimeters 800 by 480 millimeters. To help keep the carbon fiber filament dry they do give you a good decent amount of desiccant. This would be used inside the dry box. Assembling the dry box for use is very easy. The two provided bearings are assembled as shown on the screen and placed inside the box. This will enable your filament to be placed on each of the bearings and rotate freely. Both 1K and 500 gram rolls can be used. The desiccant is placed at the back and at the bottom of the box. With your printer you will receive a 500 gram carbon fibre roll of filament. The drier that you can keep this filament the better for each of your prints. The filament reel should rotate freely when inside the box. Inside your box you should find a dry box storage rack. There are no hard and fast rules on how this rack should be fitted. I found it easier to put in the screws loosely first when all the screws are in place then tighten up each of the screws to secure the bracket. These will only need to be hand tight so there's no need to over tighten them. All the screws and screwdriver are provided to do this. By placing the drying box on the top of the bracket I found it easy again by putting all the screws in first then tightening up to finish. When pushing the filament through the tubing it should go in very easy indeed. Don't forget to put the rubber seal over the join on the box. Push the filament into the extruder until it stops. And finally push the piping into the extruder clip on the top. As with any 3D printer we will need to prime the extruder. This is simply done by heating up the extruder to in this case for carbon fibre 280 degrees. To start the process simply press the temperature digits and you'll see it turn red and the temperatures start to increase. Once it has reached 280 degrees press the downward triangle. This will start the extruder pulling through the filament. It will take a few seconds for the filament to appear. Once it's run for about 5 seconds you can stop the temperature and the extruder from extruding the filament. Make sure that the nozzle is clean, then the first thing you should do is a bed levelling. Use the bed levelling sheet provided to do this. There are two methods that you can use here, manual or automatic. I would suggest that you use the automatic function on this as it is much easier to do and it will get you going rather quickly. 
Make sure that the nozzle has been cleaned after you've extruded the filament. As mentioned before, all the functionality for the printer can be found on the USB stick. Now this includes videos of everything including the automatic bed levelling and manual. I suggest that you go through each and every one of these videos to familiarise yourself. One thing to keep in mind here is that the high temperature extruder for carbon fibre is fitted with the BL Touch or the auto levelling. The other extruder, the normal extruder, does not, although you can move it over to the other extruder if required. Once everything has set up and your levelling is done, you can go to the USB stick, have a search on there, you will find a couple of test files, one for PLA and the other for carbon fibre. In this case we're using the carbon fibre, now this is a 30mm test block. I will test this later for size when it's finished printing. It was interesting to see that the information given on the screen for the bed, the extruder, how many millimetres per second that the filament comes out, how long it's going to take and how far it's into the print. At the moment we've got the cover off just so as we can see what's happening. Uh, it is suggested with carbon fibre that the front door is closed, also the lid is in place when printing. There was a small amount of noise with the lid off, but when the lids were put back on we took an audio reading to see how noisy it was, and to be quite honest it was very quiet indeed. The ambient noise before printing was approximately 30 dB. During printing it was approximately 41 dB average. With the magnetic PEI board that we're using, there is no need for any adhesives to stick the model to the plate. While the plate is hot, the model will stick on there and when the plate cools down, the model will fall off with ease. You will see all the aspects of the prints on the LCD screen as it's printing. As a point of interest, they do provide you with a spare stainless steel PEI coated board. I must admit I was extremely happy with the quality of its first print. And yes, I went into print mode and printed loads of other things. As promised, the 30mm cube, I'm going to test that now and see if it is actually 30 or not. That is quite good. I wasn't really expecting that, I thought it would have been a little further out than what it was, but no, that is extremely good. For accuracy of print, I must give it full marks. They do provide you with a filament sensor. Now this is an item that detects whether the filament has run out or not and takes appropriate action. If you are doing a large print, this would be most beneficial to you to have it fitted. We're going to show you here how it's fitted, but again, they do have a video on the USB stick that shows you precisely how they do it. But this is how we've done as simply remove the old feed through mechanism. That was simply done by removing four screws and making sure that the printer switched off, plug in the new sensor into the provided cable that's at the back of the printer. Push the sensor into position and replace the four screws. It is as simple as that, but don't forget to tell it that the filament center is fitted by ticking the appropriate box. After printing quite a few models in carbon fiber, I decided to change the high temperature extruder for the normal temperature extruder. This is quite a simple job of removing five of the screws. Remove the high temperature extruder and replace it with the normal extruder. Fit the ribbon cable, put the cover over the top and you're done. One thing you must do is do a bed levelling. Remember this is going to be a little different than before. The other extruder had an automatic function on it and this one does not. So you'll have to do that manually again. 
check out the USB stick on there it'll show you how to do that this time we have removed the dry box as we're going to print in some PLA. You will find two telescopic filament holder arms which you need to pull up as shown on the screen here. Line up the reel in the centre of the printer then tighten up the small screws on either side. Feeding the filament through the sensor then into the tubing push the filament all the way through Till it protrudes out the end of the tubing. Feed the filament then into the top of the extruder pushing down on the filament lock lever. When in place fit the tubing both on the back of the printer and on the top of the extruder. Bring the extruder up to temperature in this case it'll be 200 degrees for the PLA that we are using. Because each of the extruders are tested before they're sent out with the printers you will see the remnants of whatever colour filament that they used at the time. In our case we were using white but blue started to ooze out as soon as we started to get the flow. Let it run for about 5 seconds of the colour that you're using and you'll be good to go. All that procedure can be found on the USB stick as we mentioned earlier. It has all the videos that shows you how to do things step by step. This time we're going to print the same 30mm test cube using PLA. Remember you may have to change the temperatures if you've gone from the hot extruder to the normal extruder. So be aware of that. Unlike printing carbon fibre using PLA, the top is removed and the door is left open while it is printing. As with the carbon fibre print, again we did not need any adhesives for the models to stick to the bed. It was pleasing to see again that the quality was superb on this print of PLA. Over the next few days I will print out a few models and show them at the end of the video. Remember to keep your USB pen drive safe as it has all them videos and information including manuals, QD print software and simplified 3D profiles. Don't forget to check out each of the small videos that they provide on the USB stick. They are well worth looking at. Regarding software that can be found again on the stick this is the QD print but you can also use Cura or Simplified 3D. The models can be transported onto a USB stick to be fed into the printer or you can do it via LAN or you can use Wi-Fi. All of them work quite well. All the models so far that I've printed out, as you can see here on the screen, both in carbon fibre and also PLA, have turned out exceptionally well. I've had no failures up to yet. If you are in the market for a 3D printer, the XCF Pro is well worth considering. I hope you found this information of use to you. Thank you for watching.